Good afternoon. Hello and welcome, family, friends, and loved ones. We are gathered here today to celebrate and honor the memory of our beloved Abra born January 30, 1939, the third child of Bartolome and Benunda Angeles. Adrashon, otherwise known lovingly as Ajin or Polidori, was married to Janicio Medina and is survived by her two strong, beautiful, and caring daughters, Cara Mia Mendiola and Myra Peraza. Polidori was a famous hairstylist in the Philippines in the 1970s to celebrities and socialites. She migrated to the U.S. in the 1980s and became a nurse. She has six grandsons, one granddaughter, all of whom will carry her memory as they grow up and take on the world. Lola Dora is loving, caring, committed to her faith, and was as generous a person there ever was. And she had a talent for singing. Thank you all for gathering to celebrate the life of our beloved Adoration, Lola Dori, Achim. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. Our life's been full, disabled much. With friends, sometimes, a loved one study. Perhaps my time is in all the rain. Don't let them it down with undisbelief. Pick up your hearts and peace. God, what does he know? He said, please wait. I'm here to help my sister. It's her part. Um, I have about four paragraphs written down, but I can't read a word. <laughs> Yeah. 
she was always willing to step up and help people in need. She made everyone feel not just good, but also important and valued. She's always been such a gregarious and outgoing person, and she was such a magnetic force. She never met a stranger, because everyone was always immediately a potential new friend. It made things interesting that way, and she deeply cared about people. And it warms my heart to see that so many of the people she loved are here. Um, my family and I came into town yesterday from Bakersfield, where we recently moved. We were dropping off our dog. Anyway, long story short, Seth pointed out to me, hey, isn't that the lady who used to work at Soup Plantation that your mom befriended? I thought that was a nice sign that I would see her randomly. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for all coming to my grandma's service. She was someone who never let anyone stop her from achieving her goal. She was a very dedicated, passionate, and kind-hearted soul that never, ever let anybody leave the house without a smile. For her to pass through the weapon was to stop for a whole entire day. Her impact on me was great, but Clearly, it's greater since everybody that's here is here to celebrate her life. To start off, I don't really have a, a favorite memory of her. I mostly just have different parts of my life where she made humongous impacts and she created so many opportunities for me to be the person that I am today. She was always a new comfort or support. Um, she always wanted me to keep a smile on my face, to keep, to keep going. The ones that really stuck with me, though, was when she would hear um, from, you know, me or my mom or my boss that one of us was hurt or that one of us was sick. She'd make time out of her own day to come and check up on us or to call us, check up, text, anything just to make sure that her grandkids are okay. All six of them. Another memory I cherish is um, Vegas. Uh, she loved going to Vegas. She loved to gamble. She loved going to have fun. But um, one of my favorite times was, uh, I guess, when we were sleeping because, you know, <clears throat> we used to stay in the same hotel as, as her most of the time. And um, she never, ever, ever wanted us to not leave her. She would always make sure that uh, we were having the best time, even though there's not really much to do in Vegas for little kids. But um, she would always make sure that we were always asleep, maybe by 12, 1 a.m. But even past then, she would make time to still go out and get it. While we were sleeping and sounding, she would wake up in the morning and Bryce, just no clue of what was going on in the night. But to find out that she was going gambling and having fun and coming back in the morning with breakfast, it's always a great feeling. Speaking of food and soup plantation as well, obviously her favorite restaurant was soup plantation. 
every time she would go, she'd always try to bring me, Bryce, Zayden, Logan, any of her grandkids. And she loved that place. She absolutely loved it. Sue Plantation was her idea of spending time and really getting to know me and Bryce. It was basically a second home to really go there and eat and eat with my grandma, who didn't really eat. She just wanted to watch us. She just wanted to make sure that all of us were good and we were all healthy. Another place that also brings a nice warm feeling to my heart is Century City. That, that place will always be uh, one of her favorite go-to spots for shopping. She always used to um, drag us out there even if we didn't want to. Um, she just wanted to spend so much time with us. But now um, it's time for us to spread her, to spread her joy, and to make sure that everybody around us is also also feeling positive. And that's the way she would want things. She never wanted anybody to feel sad or feel hopeless because <clears throat> she. She had that feeling of comfort. If you stepped into her house, she always greeted you with a hello, with an I love you. She loved her grandkids, she loved her kids, she loved everybody that was a part of her life. But one thing that I will try to recreate is her cooking. She used to be one of the best cooks that I know. And I think one dish that really sticks out to me is uh, <laughs> her, uh, her buffalo wings on Christmas Day. For some reason, they, they were just so, so good. Um, I have a recipe down somewhere, and I'd love to make them sometime, just so I can bring back a family tradition. But like I said, my grandma was never afraid to speak her mind. Whether it was about family drama or things going on at work, she just really, really, really loved to talk. Whether it was just to her kids, to me, to her friends, she just couldn't stop talking. Very vocal. And um, whether it was her talking or her singing, she still had a beautiful voice. And she was never afraid to let anybody talk down to her. And she, she had this way of calling me and Bryce down when um, we were kids. She had this lullaby, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of it, but it's basically just the, uh, the same old lullaby in Quebec song, but she never sang the words. She only hung the tune. And I'm sure you're all, you're all familiar with the tune, but she had such a beautiful and angelic voice that no matter what, it felt like, it felt like you were sleeping in a pillow full of clouds. Her voice just had that kind of comforting feeling to it. And although <clears throat> most stories have a happy ending, my grandma was a firm believer of not having it. During the final year of her life, I want to say that, or I want to believe that I was the closest person that she had to a friend. Or anybody around her. One day, she told me that um, she was going to die alone. Nobody was going to be there for her. Nobody was going to remember her. But I think we're all here today to prove her wrong. That we're all here to show that we all love her. We will never, ever forget her. When those words came out of my mouth, they, when those words came out of her mouth, they really hurt me. But I'm glad that all of you are here today to show that. She really meant something to all of you. We will miss you dearly. Adoración. <clears throat> Fly high with everybody up in heaven. And may God rest your soul.
can save. So I'm going to save for him. Hi, Grandma. I miss you already, and I will never forget hanging out with you, Grandma. I will never forget how we took the bus to Sioux Plantation because it was my first time in a bus. It was so cool. I wish you were still here because you were always nice, and most importantly, you are the best grandma. Thank you for the best memories. Up next is Logan. Hi, Grandma. I miss you a lot. I miss holding your hands and walking to places when he got doggy number two. I love you, Grandma. I will never forget you. Logan. Uh, I'm not as Tom. Fun uh, fact, uh, we call her Tima Dori, me and my sister, but she's actually uh, our grandma. We're supposed to call her Bella Dori. <coughs> she wasn't having it when we were young, so it stopped. We just called her Tima Dori. So I read this uh, book, or I uh, saw it in the inspired um, movies. Uh, and it was a gentleman or a lady is someone that makes everyone around them as comfortable as possible. And Tita Dori was a true lady. She always had something nice to say. She always encouraged me and built me up. As a kid, I wasn't the most behaved, but she believed in me. That's how she was. She saw the person have the behavior of action. <clears throat> she loved you no matter what. She understood that I'm not perfect and I will make and continue to make mistakes, but just encourage you to do better. She was very generous and caring. She's the definition of an independent woman. She moved here to a new country, broke multiple jobs and made sacrifices to give her family a final chance for a good life. <clears throat> and she succeeded. Her daughters is a reflection of her tenacity and hard work. But the ultimate sign of her accomplishments in life is the huge, uh, huge impact she made on all of us. So let's honor her by being nice to each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's build each other up. Because that's the way she wants us to. That's the way she did for us. Tita Dora showed us the blueprint on how to be a, a lady or a gentleman. <coughs> I love you, Tita Dora. Thank you for everything. I am Mike Manado. Um, Tita Dora's favorite nephew. <laughs> Contrary to what other people might say. Tita Dori. I would like to think that I was her favorite nephew. It might not be true, but that's how I felt. Um, before Mia and my child uh, were born, I was some sort of her son. <laughs> I remember going to her salon uh, with my mom and with Tiro. Tara Mia was its name. Um, just across the infamous Club 690. You can just Google that. <laughs> um, Tita Dori would always um, give me a five peso bill, which at the time was a huge amount. I could go to the nearby corner grocery store and buy myself some popsicles or ice cream cups. Uh, Tita Dori, I would like to think that you are the one. You were the one who first introduced me to PX Goods. Um, their house would always have imported chocolates in the candies and apples, oranges. She liked nice things and pursued a good life. 
And coming to America as her next home was the fitting thing to do. Hilton was her favorite hotel. That's where her wedding reception was held, and I was her ring bearer at the time. Nita Dori, I would like to think you helped me become the artist that I am today. She would buy me um, colored pencils, pens, markers, and any art materials that you could possibly think of. She pushed me to really develop uh, my talent in that sense, and I would use them to create personalized superhero masks that I could sell to people. She even bought me my first camera for my photography class. Tita Dori, I would like to think that I got your entrepreneurial spirit, having your own business and doing the things that you like, having a lot of customers every day. I remember the fusion of fragrance of Aquanet, hairspray and nail polish scents, whereas we refer to as cubics. As they fill the air, it has become one of my favorite smells in the world, aside from your crisp five peso bills. They say we are dying the moment we are born. Nita Dori, I would like to think that you watched us, uh, that you waited for us to come here in California before you said goodbye. It was in our plan to visit you when we decided to take a vacation here. Who would have guessed that this will be our last time to see you? Nita Dori, I would like to think that you, will that you still saw me and heard me when I visited you in the hospital last Sunday, when I said my last goodbye, and whispered that you owe me five pesos and will collect it when the time comes. Nita Dori, I would like to think that you were the one who hit the other pair of my slippers that I lost yesterday morning after. Editing your video for the memorial. Up to now, I still couldn't find it. The Dory would like to think that this, is, that this is not goodbye, that you are in a better place and watching over us uh, with Commander holding a whiskey as we celebrate our life. The Dory would like to thank you for all that you have done not just for me, but for all of us, for your selflessness, generosity, and guidance. That's how I would write, like, uh, that's how I would write your life story, a story that's full of love. I will miss your comments on my happy stories in your private messages of how proud you are of your family, your countless photos of your apos that you sent to me, because of you, our families were able to reunite once again today. And we would reunite again. Um, please bring my slippers when we do. I tried um, very hard to write something for today. I kept thinking last night, how do you sum up a whole lifetime with mere words? You can't, I couldn't, I couldn't. before she started to decline to leave. Seth and I gathered some of the things at her home. And I came across a notebook where she had an entry dated November 17, 2016. The 25 things you don't know about me. And I knew when I found this when the this day would come. The 
she would be my voice. Especially because she knows, and you guys know me, I don't know. So give me some grace. I want to honor her and read to you her notes because it's a true reflection of how we all know her and remember her intimately. You want to talk to them? Okay, you can hold my hand while I read. Number one, I'm a very punctual person. Um, she wasn't punctual. She would get to places hours before she needed to be there. Thank you for that. Car still needs to catch up with that. <laughs> Number two, I'm a very emotional person. Number three, I have a very short fuse. I'm looking to my mom's side of the family. We all know what that was like. Number four, I don't drink or smoke. I think she wrote this for me <laughs> as a remembers. Um, number five. I don't say bad words. I don't say bad words. She never did JJ shaking his head. Um, she never did. Cars, thank you might have heard a word or two. Number six, I am a compulsive buyer. Hence the themes of shopping, Century City Mall. <laughs> Number seven. It bothers me to send men to see men crying, but especially children. Number eight. Forgive, but not forget. Number nine, I am a giver. I have not met. Please. Um, 
She didn't follow that rule. She was sitting everywhere she went. Number 13. I can't stand dishes in the sink. Sorry, dirty dishes in the sink. 14. I'm looking at my maternal cousins because I think we all got this too. I love expensive things. But I only buy it when it's on sale. <laughs> yeah. I'll share with you a recent fun memory of mom um, for Mother's Day we went to visit her. We were staying by, it was a little bit busy with COVID restrictions. It was always unpredictable how many people were allowed to go in. We were lucky that both kiddos, Seth and I, were able to be in a room with her. Bring her the flowers. I brought her the run, which she said was too sweet. <laughs> um, and then she said, you know what I did not. Every visit leading up to that last one became increasingly hard. But in a moment, she came back to me because she asked me, how much was your knee over? <laughs> how much was your And she asked me if she could have it. Number 15. I never learned how to ride a bike so much so to drive. Number 16. No horror movies for me, please, especially at night. 17. I love sweets. I know what happens to me to you. 18. People say that I'm overprotective of my five grandsons. I love them so much. Nineteen. I don't have a granddaughter, only five boys. My private joy. Number twenty. I love my daughters, Cara and Myra, and my five red sons to the moon and back. Number 21, I love to eat out. <laughs> 22, I love to have breakfast at my favorite cafe down the street for my apartment. People who she worked with, I see a few of you here, people who helped take care of her. You guys remember her favorite was Pete's Coffee. I remember her getting mad if I would get her something other than Pete's Coffee. <laughs> 23 pasta is one of my favorite foods. 24, I love coffee flavored ice cream and nothing else. 25, I hate phosphorus. As I said earlier, this was an entry that she wrote in November of 2016. There's a number 26 that she later added. It's not dated, but she just added it to the list. Um, number 26. Now I have a granddaughter named Cindy Rue. Hi, Grandma. I miss you all day, and I will never forget.
get thinking out of the same thing. I will never forget how we took the bus to Sioux Plantation because it was my first time in a bus and it was so cool. I wish you were still here because you are always nice and most importantly, you are the best grandma. Thank you for the best memories. Everybody, this is Houston. Houston, this is everybody. Sound. I'm Grandma's grandson. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky. In the sweet silver sun, walk, walk through the wind, walk on through the rain, for your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Mother God. We are gathered here today in memory of the life of Itadori. As we celebrate, we give you thanks for sharing her life to us. She touched so many lives. She stood for parents, siblings, nephews, nieces, and most especially for her family, including her grandchildren. She lived a life so generously and graciously serving you through her love and kindness to others. As we remember, we also remember how you should, you showed your love for us when you, signed, when you sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, as the propitiation for our sins. You commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. That was the life that Tita Dori had lived. We pray, Father God, that you lift her soul and give her peace and show her compassion and grace. We are all sinners, Father, but we live in your promise that if we confess our sins, you are compassionate and gracious to forgive. Open the gates of your kingdom in heaven and receive the spirit of Titadori to live with you in eternal peace. As in the words of the Apostle John, in his Gospel, John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 state, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but has everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. And we hold to this hope that you give us in Revelation 21, verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and the death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For what? The former things have passed away. I also pray, Father God, that you give comfort and healing to our children, me and my child, who are grieving from her loss. That there be peace in their minds and hearts, and strengthen them as, as they bear the pain and sorrow of being left alone by a loving mother. Be with them, Lord, and help them overcome. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. To end tonight's celebration, we'd like to sing one of Tita Dori's favorite songs. Thank you. 
Thank you. 